Hello everyone, it's Neil here from 3D Tutor, back today with another tutorial, a little bit different this time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a few tutorials in the future about just some quick blender tips and tricks that you might not be aware of. So this is the first one, so with that said, let's get started. So the first thing, this is Blender 2.9 as you can see down here and you'll notice that when I click on something like this it doesn't have any details about it, it doesn't have how many uh, vertices or triangles it has or anything like that. So what we need to do is we need to come up to edit, go to preferences and then what we do is we come to interface, just make sure you're on there, come down to where it says status bar and then you'll see show scene statistics, system memory and video memory. And then if you have this on auto save preferences, you can just literally just close this down. And now you'll see that down here, we've got amount of triangles in the scene. And if we press tab, we can see how many triangles is in this actual piece of mesh. So the next tip, let's go to our plane. And if I press uh, tab, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I'm on vertex select. I'm gonna select all these vertices going down here. And there's a quick and easy way of actually putting a line straight down the middle of here. And all you need to press is the J button. And then what you can do actually is you can come to a vertex like this one. And let's say you wanted to select all these vertices. Rather than select these all one by one, what you can actually do is come up to the select, go down to where it says select similar and select amount of connecting edges. And then what you'll find is you're now able to select all of these that look the same to Blender. So now let's go to the next one. So if we come to this plane now, you'll see we've got the kind of same set up here. So what I'll do is I'll select one vertex. I'll go again and uh, select similar based on amount of connecting edges. And then what I'll do is I'll right click and we can actually bevel the vertices. So now you can pull them out and actually bevel them and make nice holes very easily. So now if I come up to faces, so now what you can do is actually you can do the same thing again. So we'll come up and we'll go to select similar and we'll base it on area this time. And then what you can see, you can actually pull those down and make things very easily like this. And now let's go over to our next object and you'll see this object if I press tab has 254,000 triangles. So that's no good if we want to send it through to a games engine or substance painter or something like that. It's just far, far too dense. So there is an easy way to actually remesh this and bring the polygon count right down. So I recommend if you're gonna do that to have a high and low poly, what you should do is first of all, come over to the object and basically press Shift D, grab it, right click to drop it back, and then I'll just rename it low just so we know which one it is. And now what I'll do is I'll hide the high poly uh, object. So let's hide that one. And now I'm just left with this one. So now if we come over to the little green triangle on the right hand side, and what we can do is we can come down to where it says remesh, Leave it on voxel and what you can do is you can actually bring this down by pressing voxel remesh. Now it's down to eight and a half thousand triangles. You can also, if you bring this voxel size up, so let's bring it up a little bit, click on voxel remesh again, and then you can bring it down even further. And what you can do is you could actually use this when you've smoothed it. So right click, shade smooth, and bring in your uh, other high poly one. And you can see that they're very, very close together, close enough to get a really nice bake of a high and low poly mesh. And finally, the last uh, little tip, if you press Shift A and you bring in a camera, rather than trying to actually set up your camera to look at the view like this, all you need to do is press Control, Alt and Zero, and that will actually set the camera up based on where you're looking at. So that's it for today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give me a like. So if you like what I do and you want to support the 3D Tudor channel, then check out the links down below. On there you'll find Patreon with all the courses that I do, which I give out for free on a monthly basis. So, thanks a lot everyone, and as always, happy modelling. See you on the next one.